You know, first of all, the world is changing. Actually, somebody said to me recently that um, we will never experience a world that is changing so slowly as we are now because every year it's going to be changing faster and faster and faster. So however fast this feels, this is the slowest it will ever be in our lifetime. So, you know, we're, we're changing super fast and new competitors are coming out of nowhere, new ideas are coming out of nowhere, we have climate change, I'm working with an organization and they're, they're dealing with diversity inclusivity issues, they're dealing with sexual harassment issues. And, and what I'm saying to the most senior leaders of this organization is, you know, the world you grew up in 20 years ago is very different than now. But what's even more drastic is the world you lived in six months ago is different than now because expectations of your behavior as leaders is changing literally month by month. And we have to keep up in order to like, manage how we meet people where they are, either employees or customers where they are. And so like, the world is transforming very, very quickly, both from a competitive standpoint, both from, and, and from a societal standpoint, and we need to be ahead of that. So it's a great question, and I, and I, would, I would say that the barriers are twofold. I want to talk about it on a personal level and on an organizational level. Right, on the, and I'll start with the organizational level. On the organizational level, um, we've got hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people in an organization, and they're all doing really important work, and they're all very, very focused, and they all have 10 to 20 different priorities, which, by the way, defies the definition of priority. Right? Priority was only a, became a word that could be plural recently. Right? It used to just be a singular word. You had a priority. But now people have priorities. And so you've got all these people moving in all of these different directions. And it's chaos in an organization. And so one of the biggest challenges is, and I, I talk about this in terms of the big arrow, which is articulating the big arrow. What is most important to achieve over the next 12 months? And creating alignment and creating collective action in an organization is very difficult. So the first biggest challenge is to say, can we literally all get on the same page of what it is that we're trying to achieve so that we can transform? And then on the individual level, it's, we talk about transformation very intellectually. But here's the thing. People don't resist change. They resist being changed. So you're willing to change. You make decisions to change every day. You make massive decisions. You get married. You, you change jobs. You change your work. You change your focus. You make decisions to change all the time. But if I want to change you, you're going to resist it because you lose control. When you're choosing to change, you have control. When I try to change you, you lose control. And nobody wants to lose control. And so the biggest challenge individually when we're trying, when organizations come in and try to change people and say we all have to transform, our immediate reaction is you're not going to change me. You, you don't get to transform me, right? And so, so to help structure change so that we have choice in the way that we're changing and that we can make choices about how to change. And then I would say actually the third piece is that change fundamentally is emotional and we almost always approach change intellectually and never really deal so well with the feelings of change. So I think all of those things together make it very, very difficult to transform people in an organization. I think the thing we need to understand most, first of all, is actually the, like, understand the mechanics of those barriers, right? Which is from a large scale perspective, we need to understand what is the big arrow? What is most important for you to achieve? We need to understand how to be totally focused, together, collectively aligned and accountable, and we have to be scanning outside at the same time, right? Because what we have to do is be able to look at where there might be, you know, where, you know, we have to follow our path Think of if we're in a wilderness. We have to follow our path, but we have to make sure there's no tigers that are about to attack us at the same time. So we have to understand the competitive landscape and see what we might not be focused on while also being totally focused. And if we get distracted, we, we become in trouble because 20 people getting distracted in 20 different ways means that individually they can all be productive and collectively they can be completely stagnant. So, so we have to, and it's very challenging to have those skills. And then individually, 
we have to really be willing to connect with our emotions and what is it that we're feeling in the moment and how might that distract us from change. And we have to be able to, as leaders, speak to and connect with people emotionally and I would say even spiritually and physically we need to be able to understand how things feel so that we don't get blown away by it and we can stay focused on what's most important. So my most recent book is Leading with Emotional Courage, and it's focused about the willingness to feel, increasing our capacity to feel. And if we're able to increase our capacity to feel, we can increase our capacity to act. So the reason we don't act in the world is because there are things we don't want to feel. If you think about a difficult conversation you're not having, right? You know everything you need to know to have it. You're perfectly skilled enough to have it, and you've had time and opportunity, I bet. So why don't you have the conversation? And it's because there's something we don't want to feel. And this is true with actions. If I want to have a, have a, you know, take an action, take a risk in my life, why don't I do it? It's not because I'm incapable. It's very easy. My kids have taught me that if you ever need to learn anything, you can find a YouTube video that's going to teach you. So it's very easy to figure out how to do these things and to learn and to practice. But you know, to feel what we need to feel in order to move forward on what's most important to us, that's really hard. That's really hard. And, and we, we kind of constrict ourselves. We stop ourselves from feeling things. And so what's most important, the work that I'm doing is, how do we help people increase their capacity to feel? And we do that by actually being vulnerable and feeling things and realizing that we can survive it. So that, a lot of my work, a lot of my research right now is really focused on you know, developing emotional courage and then expressing and, and facing situations where we could practice emotional courage so that we can show up really powerfully in our lives, at work, as leaders in organizations.